point is just to be yourselves and to th- sound authentic. Are you the- crying? Aww. Welcome to Rose Flower Radio, the show that goes behind the scenes of your favorite independent artists and creatives. I'm your co-host, Michael Wilson. <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Shirley Versailles. With us today, we got a group of four. We got the Cherry Club Band, the Cherry Club. Let's go! It you was know? the biggest, the biggest amount of people that we have had on a set at the extra time. Extra chair. So, yeah, extra chair moment. New mics, by the way. New mics, by the way. You've know, you seen them if you're watching our live streams. I don't know what you're doing if you're not, but not. yeah, look at this shit. It was a great episode, you know, we talked about TikTok, we talked about starting a new project and then balancing against your existing one. You really don't want to miss out on them at all because they're combining like the 70s and the 90s and today and the rock and the grunge and the everything. It's super awesome and we had an absolute blast of a conversation talking to them about independent art. So we hope you enjoy and also we're recording this during sunset so yeah, it's beautiful hopefully right. we look pretty. Okay, right. bye bye. See ya. Boom! But with us today on the podcast, we have Cherry Club. The band is it the Cherry Club? Yeah, we were discussing this. The it Cherry is the Club, the Cherry Club Bam, the Cherry yeah. Club. Like, what's going on? Yep, it's the Cherry Club. What's the reason for the the? Any reason? Well, it's the. But it's the club. As opposed to any. As opposed to yeah, exactly. As opposed to any other cherry club. Yeah, right? You know, this is, this is the, the cherry club. <laughs> so I would love for each of you guys maybe to answer this in your own way. If it's all the same answer, that's fine. But like, who came up with the name Cherry Club? How did that start? And like, who contacted who? Where? How did the band form overall? Well, we were about to go with the name The Strawberry Experiment. <laughs> also <laughs> awesome. That's just like Manhattan Project level. Like, yeah, it, like right. that's like a 60s experiment right oh there. Oh my gosh, we were back and forth with so many different names. But uh, The Strawberry Experiment felt a little bit too psychedelic rock. Yeah. And we were trying to go for punk rock. Yeah. Okay. And The Cherry Club. I think, Alex, did you come up with it? I did. He's like taking all the credit. Like, not even, it was a group project. No, this was an Alex project. Yeah, we were thinking of names for like a month probably, and we were going back and forth with like a few, and I just came up with Cherry Club. What was the first one? Smile Therapy? Smile Therapy. We had some names that were thrown around. I would argue that normal therapy is smile therapy. Maybe I'm overstepping there. (laughs) (laughs) No, but speaking of names, why don't we run down really quickly, sis? We're here with the Cherry Club band, the Cherry Club. Why don't we run down and get your individual names now as well? All right. Hey, I'm Jess. I'm Alex. I'm Lila. I'm Kayla. Okay, awesome. And we were talking before these uh podcast this is your first interview first podcast first from what we could tell is that correct okay so we thought it would be funny because it is like your guys's first ever interview first ever anything whenever groups go on and get interviewed they get asked the same questions how did you meet where did the mike already did it where did the name come from started this that we thought it would be funny to start your first interview ever your first podcast ever quick fire round Every cliche question that a group gets asked, you just bang it out. You never need to answer questions again. Someone goes, so how did you guys meet? You go, no, watch the video real quick. (laughs) All right, you good? Now let's get to the real questions. All right, so how does that sound? All right, so first question, where did you meet? Go. Um, Alex was my first friend in California when I moved to Santa Barbara with my family. Uh, We met when we were 12. And... We played in a band together when we were younger. We played Green Day. We were like a Red Hot Chili Peppers Green okay. Day cover band. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, I still remember the first song we wrote together. It was about like the dress code in our middle school. And Are then, you serious? <laughs> yeah. Was it like a punk like... I could. Oh, yeah. That's we're, awesome. We're breaking the dress code. Yo, so, <laughs> no, let's go. And, that's so sick. <laughs> and then we like kind of did our own kind of musical things throughout high school. Mm. And when I moved to LA, I called her, and I met Lila through uh, gigging. Our sound engineer, the breaking sounds sound. guy. Yeah. Yeah, and then Kayla was. We got lucky to <laughs> meet Kayla off uh, social media too. Oh, so really? Awesome. For musicians. <laughs> are you <Yeah>. si- wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Is this? A, are you guys about to do like a what is it called? Like a read write off? What are they called? This. 
podcast is brought to you by, by Vamper. <laughs> What's read? it called? It's called Vamper. Vamper? Vamper. Vamper. Yeah. Oh, I've seen an ad for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So success rate, it worked. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I recommend it, honestly. To any musicians looking to play live with other people, uh Vamper's dope. You can okay. meet some really cool people. Okay. Is it actually like you swipe left and right? Like on people? <laughs> That's, That's kind of crazy. crazy. I actually haven't heard for of this. Vampire. So this is like Tinder from you Vamper? Yeah. 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 Okay, this is great. I gotta. I gotta do you do like some check out the again. demos and be like, "Oh, that sucks," and then like, <laughs> switch to the other what one. What was your profile? Even it was like, I think it was just like pictures of you. And you said no, you no, played no. guitar, right? And I was like, yeah, I said I wanted to bring the ringing back into my ears. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's awesome. I just noticed you have a Daniel Johnston uh, tattoo. Oh, I do. I do. I have like two of them. I have that one, and then I have that one. The tattoos are sick. Those yeah. are so awesome. What was your first one? This one. It's really blotchy. It's love it if what is it? I don't even know. Love it if <laughs> <laughs> love it if we made it. The nineteen seventy five. That's sick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you growing up, were you always a bass player, or what? Did yo, you- yo, <laughs> no, the the offense that she took to that question. What, What's the story? How did music impact you first, Kayla? Me? Yes. Um, like overall. Yeah. How did ha- how did it happen? Where, how'd you get here? How did I get here? Um, I started a band in 2019 with some guys, and it didn't work out. Um, and then I went on Vamper. There I mean, go. it's a really short story. It was like... <laughs> We're done. <laughs> well, then she there you go. Lila said I needed to play bass, and then I was I said like, I, you need <laughs> to play bass? <laughs> 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 no, you said you needed to play bass. No, you said you needed to Well, I didn't know how to play bass, and then I kind of thought, like, guitar and, like, bass. Like, guitar. <laughs> Same thing. You got me that yeah. I didn't want to back down from like this. Yeah. This like opportunity. Like I'm not like some like. And where are you? Can I cuss? Y- yeah. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. some little bitch, basically. Yeah. I'm yeah. like a little bitch. You say and no. Now she shreds. And now yeah. <laughs> she does shred. She's great guitarist too. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. So, um, going from Vamper, like, were you on there for a bit, or was it like immediately, like, with in Long like a week or something? Days and nights. Really. I was on there. Just left, right, left, left right. right. Left, no, right. I was even sending because I think if like you ran up, ran, run out of swipes, you can like send like a referral code to like somebody else, and you get like ten more swipes. Oh my god! So I'm like sending emails. it to my friends. I'm like, ignore this. I need more swipes. So. Uh, well, it's cool because I feel like that I saw ads for Vamper like pretty early on, and like. I was like, oh, that's cool. It was one of those things I'm like, I'm going to bookmark that and then never look at that Forget ever about again. It immediately. Yeah. Um, so that's cool that that actually worked for you guys. And you said that you, all, all four of you said that you like would recommend that like four bands overall. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I doubted it at first. Like if we were going to find <laughs> someone. And we got lucky, honestly. But I think a lot of people can use it and find great musicians that way. That's awesome. Yeah. And then so you guys just released your first song. As of recording yesterday, as of today has come out less than 24, or I guess just over 24 hours, 9 p.m. Thursday. Uh, what's the release been like, or what's the response been like? Has it been what you hoped for, like what you were expecting? What's it been like? First new band, first drop, how you feeling so far 24 hours after it's come out? <laughs> I mean, you never know what to expect when you're putting out music. Yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of... People reach out and were inspired by it. We didn't want to do the whole um, clean cookie cut TikTok yeah. route. And so I said no to like the auto tune. And uh, we've gotten a really great response from just the overall vibe of recording it ourselves, yeah. wow. producing it ourselves, mixing it ourselves, and uh, putting it out that way. People have been really stoked to see that. And then, of course, like, you know, I know that musicians get caught up in the numbers game, but mm-hmm. everything works out over time and you got to just keep trying. And uh, overall, I'm, I'm definitely really happy with how it's working out. As long as it sounds good on Spotify. <laughs> there you go. I think that's You're everyone's done. goal. Are, were there any like problems with the first like single? Like anything like you had to troubleshoot or like redo something a bunch of times? <laughs> yeah, so Yo, bro, you were talking about recording, yeah. Well, you, I'm mean, just like. No, so you guys self-recorded the whole thing. Yeah, well, uh, I, I saw had that a you... good friend record the vocals on it. Yeah. Andrew Tyler, shout out to you. He did a killer job, honestly. Uh, I've never heard my vocals like sound that good. 
They yeah. were awesome. Yeah, we were just talking about the vocals. That's super sick. We, we were talking about the whole track, but specifically we were really impressed by their vocals as you guys were pulling out. No, really awesome track. So did you have recording, producing experience going into this specific track, all of you, or did one of you kind of take the reins on it specifically? We each have experience just with, like, demoing certain yeah. things, but Jess has had experience in mixing and mastering and all of that, so she kind of just took the reins on that and just went through with it but yeah yeah, I've always been really into uh music production since I was like 13 years old Sick. I got into music production and I did like community college classes to learn music production um it just felt right to just do our first song together and yeah so how did you guys did you record it like one thing at a time or like was it like all in a room together or like how was the recording process like overall Yeah, so we did record it, like, one at a time, literally different days. Um, For the drums, we recorded in Santa Barbara at Jess's dad's studio. And I brought my drum set in, and we got that done. (laughs) It was, like, literally in a shed in our backyard. (laughs) That's so sick. I feel like, but that's, like, that also, like, complements the music well, too. Like, it wouldn't be something that you would expect, like, oh, like, we're going to, you know, huge studio, whatever, like... I love the music that, like, where it was recorded actually, like, embodies, like, the sound of yeah, it, Yeah, the too. sound and the attitude of it. Yeah, if you told me that you recorded it at, like, some massive studio in downtown, it's not that I'd be disappointed, but I'd be a little bit like, come on, man, like... Yeah, I want a garage and, yeah, like, just Yeah, this is garage mics, music right here. Stupid. Yeah, like, like I think you mentioned, like, no attitude, like, come on, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Can I, I talk about the guitar? <laughs> yeah, so we, we had a rehearsal after that. What was it? Like, I think, like, a week after you recorded the drums. And Jess just brings her... You brought your laptop and your interface, and we just hooked a mic up to a guitar amp and just recorded the guitar parts. There in her go. living room. In my living room. On the floor. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> on the floor in your living room. <laughs> That's so sick. And then what about bass? That's Lila. <laughs> yeah, that <was laughs> that's, all, that's, that's all. Oh. Lila. <laughs> um, it was the same day. I was just recording bass, and then I was like, okay, Kayla's just going to record her part right after. And then yeah. we ended up I think just, I was working that day. You were working or something, so we ended up just going with that. Yeah. But in the future. It sounded good. No, it sounded good. Well, because you guys all play together, too. That's the other thing that I wanted. Like, I, I think that you guys, for already releasing your first single, like, you already have, like, a pretty decent social media following, and you already have, like, I feel like that you've done a lot of prep work. I know you said you didn't want to go the normal TikTok route. Talk which I, summer. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that <laughs> at all. But, like, and I respect that also, too. Like, I think that that is the most, like, mundane way to, like, kill art, in my opinion, is yeah. to make a TikTok about it. But um, I know that you guys have been doing a lot of the... Was that, like, an intentional thing, or was it just that you guys were, like... Has this been all strategized, or are you guys just kind of going with the flow and how you're releasing stuff? When I think of promoting your music on TikTok or Instagram Reels or anything, you got to think about it with the way that, like, do not deprive people of the gift that you can give to the world. Mm. When I talk, I'm talking about the recording process. That should be all, like, straight from the heart from us. We're all doing it together, but put it out and try to push it out as much as you can because... People want to hear it, and people yeah. want to hear what you have to offer. So never deprive them of that. That was a re- okay. I won't. That was a really good <laughs> message. That's awesome. And then that's super cool. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the social media posts. Yeah, we mentioned the- it a little bit starting here, but um, I there was one of yours, one of your guys' videos that did pretty well, which was the um, like guess which one is the drummer. Um, I can tell by we the laughs, the, the reactions. <laughs> so nice. um, well, how about you guys tell the story? Why don't you guys talk about it from your perspective? You know, posting that video and then how it all <laughs> came through. Whose idea was that? Was it my? Idea? I think it was your idea. Damn. Okay. <laughs> she's like, oh, she's like, I named the band. I named the band. <laughs> but who came up with that really weird? <laughs> what do you mean? I just don't. Yeah, it was a trend going around. Uh, yeah, so. totally. But we hopped on that trend and. Honestly, we all did pretty good. We all could play a little bit, right? <laughs> Especially Kayla. I didn't know you could play at all. <laughs> Dude, no. You actually <laughs> played pretty well, though. But, um, yeah, we just filmed it. I really didn't expect, like, much from it. Because we only had, like, what, 200 followers at the time? 
I think like, we had even less than that. Like, we had just times. started our Instagram wow. account. Yeah. We had no idea. That we yeah. Had. <laughs> that so, was not. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I really didn't try too hard to play amazingly, but people really thought. <laughs> said, I don't even want to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Yeah, for those who are listening who aren't aware, like I feel like that there was a lot of really negative comments in that post, which was it's kind of I was we watched that and I was like, oh, this is sick, and then when we went to the comments, I'm like, oh, that's like really sad. Yeah, the, oh. that's like oh. super disheartening. So, um, the question I have for you guys is when it comes to publicity, like, there, you know, there's a saying where it's like, no publicity is bad publicity. Like, first of all. I know, like, some feelings were probably hurt. I would imagine that, like, that would hurt I my would feelings. Never, I would like, cry. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> if that happened to one of our TikToks, i cry. Like now That guy uh, should not be doing a podcast. Yeah, that's what <laughs> so, I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> um, but so, <laughs> for you <laughs> for you guys, like, how how are you yeah, taking how that? Is, yeah, how is hurt? you looking back almost? I learned a lot. I mean, <laughs> no, the hate comments are not personal. Like, they didn't talk about our appearance or anything. It I was cried if it was that. But yeah, like, yeah. Right? they were talking about the way we looked. It was nothing like that. It was just, yeah. like, totally lighthearted, surface-level stuff. And I, 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 I know, learned man. a lot about hate comments. I mean, they're very impersonal behind a computer. Yeah. yeah. And it boosted, like, it got people to who actually like us. So it was super eye-opening to get an influx of hate. I think it's hard, though, because it's like you see like all these like neg- that would really hurt my feelings. Like, just honestly, like, especially if it's like you guys haven't even put out like a song yet at that point. You know what I mean? It's like someone just like so quickly makes a judgment and then just like spews it online or whatever. Like, do you think that like was it worth it? Do you still like. Or is it something where it's like, I don't want to, like, have negative comments, like, on our page or whatever? So it was it. worth it. Yeah, it was so, so glad it happened. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> me too. Wait, <laughs> I was grateful. I mean, to me, I really did not take it personally. Wow. Um, I actually, like, when it first started blowing up, I would go on the profile of the people. And if it was public, I would spam them with likes. And I would write... <laughs> You're doing awesome. Because it was a lot of drummers yeah. that were commenting. Like, men, drummers. And I would be like, this is so good. Fire emoji. Like, <laughs> wow. and, they would, and on my personal account. And then they would end up either following me and, you know, maybe apologizing a few times. Damn. You, you got a and couple of apologies? Yo, you I did. On I did. Right there. <laughs> wow. I know. And so I got a lot of people on my side that, you know, before wrote something pretty negative. But it really, I thought it was funny, if anything. Okay. I actually would laugh. You got tough skin. I would be like, (laughs) I know. I had to turn my notifications off for the first time ever. Oh, you're famous. Okay. With Instagram. (laughs) Because I would would see them come in like Uh. every few minutes, but I just, yeah, I don't know. I really, (laughs) I want to commend you on that personally because I think that that is, that shows a lot of character, first of all. Like, that's like total like turn the other cheek, you know, like if someone like I th- I just think that that's really cool that you go in and like compliment and like <laughs> I think that you like kill them with kindness. It's such like a, yeah, exactly. a and I it think, takes them off guard a little bit. It yeah. does. Yeah. No, she's honestly one of the nicest people I know in my life. And she's yeah, <laughs> Thank uh, you. admirable. That's real. really awesome. And then do you guys, it was just like, you just tried to play the drums and it worked out or like, what I mean, yeah, we did not think it was going to go anywhere. We were yeah. like, oh, this, just, this will be funny, whatever. But I feel like if you post anything to Instagram reels, like, yeah, yeah, yo, there's, listen, reels is just, just a bad side of the there. internet yeah. over there. I've, I feel like there was like a phase. I mean, I don't really, I'm not really on TikTok that much anymore just because I just find it mind numbing. But like, you know, the, um, I feel like that there was like a very mean, time for like tiktok and i feel like all those people have now moved over to like instagram Instagram. because they're just like people are just ruthless dude like i'll see like a cute like baby like doing something like i don't know baby stuff i don't know but they're just like chilling (laughs) yeah just doing whatever and someone's like stupid it's like bro like (laughs) what does a baby do to you you? yeah the reality (laughs) of being a musician is you're always gonna get those comments that they say like embarrassing like, wow. it's just crazy. Yeah. No, I'm not I think, embarrassed. I don't know. Well, I think <laughs> it's been true for a long time. People always say, like, people will always say through the internet things they've never say 
in any other way. Instagram, though, is crazy to me because I feel like that's so personal. Like, people can tap on the profile, like, oh, you know, you tag your mom in that one post, you know? Like, you can see exactly who they are. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> in that vein, we talk a lot on our other show, our interview and performing show, about... Um, TikTok and how people quote uh, how it quote unquote ruined the music industry, you know. Uh, as some of you guys were just talking about, oh, we didn't want to do the clean cut TikTok thing. You know, I'm a big believer in still TikTok being one of the best ways to put your music out there. So I would love to get your guys' opinion on like, yes, TikTok. Fucking, I agree. It's kind of ass. Like it kind of did take, but I also believe that it's now the first time where if you have genuinely good music, you. TikTok will find the people that if people like what you're making, TikTok will find them eventually. I'm a big believer in that. So how do you guys kind of view, not necessarily TikTok, but kind of the short form instant dopamine um, way of marketing that we've kind of come accustomed to now, you know, like, cause yeah, we don't want to do it, but it, we kind of have to do it in a way. Like, how do you guys approach that? Maybe Lila and Kayla at the back here. You want to go? I think TikTok, everyone, like, especially in this day and age, we all have such short attention spans. It's just getting shorter and shorter every year. It's crazy. So I feel like just it's like if you can just push content out there, it might as well. Especially now, I feel like TikTok is great because Universal just cut all their catalog of artists. And that now was it's like crazy more, too. Seriously. By the way. But it's great because at the same time, it's like more of an independent artist platform, which yeah. is, I think, where it's kind of turning its, you know, page a little bit so yeah. i think that's a good opportunity but i don't know just following trends and stuff it's it's cringy i think it's good to just attempt at, at least like getting a little bit out there yeah and just you know keeping your own originality to it but yeah i think i think overall tiktok is pretty helpful i mean when you're proud of the music you know you want to it's fine mm-hmm. making the videos i don't think i'm very good at making those videos yeah. but you're proud of the music well one of the things i would say is that the other one that you guys had on Instagram was like the we're a girl band and then like like but I think that like your personalities were able to shine through way more so than it just be like it was fun because yes you guys were following a trend and like doing the stereotypical like we're a girl band you know like just saying whatever but like it's um exactly like that <laughs> that's, that's a really good impression I, right perfect there. impression no <laughs> but I do like I understand I think that how you guys did it still showcased the personalities of everyone that you have in the band, which I thought was really fun. If you had, like, inspiration for, like, hearing somebody else, like, maybe a band of yours that you guys all look up to or anything, like, are there big things that you guys want to, like, replicate as you do, like, that you do in your music? Or is it kind of like we're doing our own thing, kind of even that punk mentality of just, like, who cares about, like, other people? Like, are there big inspirations for you guys as a band, and who are they, like, overall? I just rambled my that way through that That was a really long question. way to get to that <laughs> end question. <laughs> I was like, where's she going with this? <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I feel like we all, we so we individually, we each do our own music. Yeah. Um, which is great too. And I think we all just do a really different kind of thing. So it's cool when we come together and just bring our own elements together. But I, yeah, I think that we all have our own um, inspirations, but we share some as a band too. Like, uh, like we love Mannequin Pussy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. We really love Mannequin Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, it. It. That's, that's the one right there. Though so you guys have a whole inspiration playlist. We do, yeah. Through, so many. <laughs> no, I got introduced to a couple new songs from through that playlist, actually. That was really, really nice. Super sick. And this always really interests me. Uh, it feels like it has, like, five different... Uh, oh, I got a solo project. I'm in this duo group. I'm in this triple group. So something I'm always curious about, as somebody who's always been around people who are in, like, five different bands, but I've always just got the one thing. Like, yeah working on this one video right now maybe i got another one coming up but i got one thing going on right now Mm -hmm. how do you juggle it all you know and at what point do you decide okay now i'm committing to one thing you know if you have you know like but at what point do you decide okay well i want to you know join this new band you know this is worthy of adding to my like I don't want to say roster, but like my uh, list. Already busy schedule. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my already busy schedule. How do I commit to yet another project? You know, what was worth it about this project where the four of you were like, okay, I got to add, mo- add th- find the time for this, you know? For me, it would be like the best of both worlds because I got 
the solo stuff is very therapeutic and a lot slower than what we're <laughs> playing. And it really is, like, I get to express myself. I mean, we're artists. Like, and honestly, Alex said something to me a long time ago. I can't really, I'm going to butcher it. But it's like, there's, there's people that, like, want to, you know write and there's people that feel like they need to write mm. and it, wait, if you're an artist you feel like you need to write and so you get for me like best of both worlds two different completely different outlets both very fruitful there's just something really cool about being in a band though the camaraderie yeah they mm-hmm. make me a better person honestly oh, there you go. yeah and I, I get to release <laughs> that anger in the punk music it's very fun you guys are like all lovey-dovey and then like on stage just going yeah. <laughs> that's super, <laughs> super awesome. Smash a guitar or two, you know. <laughs> you throw the drumstick. Oh gosh, yeah. That's really funny. It, yeah. Either of you, any of you guys, would you agree? Or? No, yeah. yeah. I think it's just worth it because it's like every time we get together, it's so much fun. Yeah. So that's, I think that's what makes me want to come back because it's just, I'm just having so much fun with them. That's what like, I feel like the fun of bands is like, there is a lot of solo stuff happening, I think with, the fact that, like, the digital age, like, you can write a pop record or, like, you can do anything in your computer now, you know what I mean? And, like, it's easier to do solo music, but I find it more enjoyable when you still see a band. Like, like it's a camaraderie. Like, everyone's still working together, um, like, on a stage and, like, showing out and stuff. So I think that that's super awesome what you guys are doing. I think more bands need to exist, like, just overall. Because it's also fun that you guys get to learn from each other. I have a question. Does Who all songwrites? Like, is it just, like, one songwriter and then, like, maybe one of the producers or mixing engineers? Like, who's the songwriter? I feel like it all comes together, like, pretty evenly. Like, we'll have a rehearsal. We'll each just come up with our own parts. And it kind of just comes together. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty natural, Jess I feel is like. crazy fast with the lyrics, though. Insane. <laughs> and melody is <laughs> like... You guys write the best, like, <laughs> songs to sing to. Um, it's so cool because we all have different influences and it's so cool how they combine together. Mm. I think Lila writes like the coolest riffs ever. She's so like modest too or humble about it. She's like, I I wrote this riff and then she proceeds to like, yeah, the coolest riff I've ever heard in my life. And then Kayla's like always surprising me with like all of the music that she brings to us. It's like, it's just such cool influences. And Alex, of course, like. When we're writing the drum, when she's writing the drum parts with us, it really does shape the songs. Mm. So we really each individually like write the we music together. together. Yeah, that's really yeah. awesome. I think that that's <laughs> again, and that, that's another thing that I think is also getting lost. I think it started with like COVID and stuff, but like when there was like everyone just was locked up in their room, like no one was like collaborating at all. I mean, you could do it on the internet, but like. That's not fun. Like, I feel like that there's, like, something, like, being in a room and just hearing, like, a riff or whatever. And then being like, whoa, 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 stop. Like, everything we need to pursue that. If it was through Zoom, you would have played the riff and just would have gone, hold on, that was awesome. You broke up halfway through. Can we run it one more time? Like, my bad, my bad. And then you do it again and like, oh, well, that was echoing. Wait, hang on, wait. Now we got to set up the audio settings. No, those, I think... Well, uh, I cut you off. I thought you. Well, the other thing I was gonna I was gonna ask is like, we have one single out right now, right? Super exciting. What's next? We got another single coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's called Nightmare. It's probably the most exciting one that people are looking forward to right now. Other than Get Out, shit, I fucked up. (laughs) String Get Out. No, Nightmare's cool as hell. It's um, it's probably one of our favorites to play. Uh, we recorded it with a really nice uh, producer, recording engineer, Johnny Vital. And I think we really just want to put it out. It's like the, it's so cool and different and funny of a song. Oh, the really? Concept. So we're like shooting for early March, right? Yeah. This yeah. one's definitely more like punk too. I feel like our Get Out is a lot more surf rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind okay. of mellow, and this one's, yeah. What made you decide shit. to release Get Out before uh, this one? I think just because we, we've been sitting on it for a while. <laughs> I mean, it was like our first song we wrote, so okay. it was like the order of things. Yeah, and you like yeah. got to commemorate it by putting it out first. I lift it a yeah. lot, yeah. So. That's super sick. <laughs> and then like, do you guys have a plan for like, so... Do you guys have a plan overall for, like, an album in the future, an EP, or, like... 
day maybe by that's day. too far out yeah. in the advance like where are you guys at in that it's regard it's so hard like it's so hard to like figure out what's the right way to go when you're releasing music do you put out singles do you put out an ep do Who you knows? put out an album yeah. We, ha- we love our music. Like, we really love it, and it's so difficult to figure out what's, um, I hate to say this, but what's to keep people, like, engaged yeah. and excited. I don't know, honestly. I know we want to put out as much music as we possibly can. It's hard to navigate. What's, like, the right answer for that? I still, yeah. don't, I still don't have that answer. Yeah. That's fine. Especially in this day and we were just talking about TikTok and everything. It's like people release an album, three songs get listened to and the rest go on yeah. stream. So yeah, it's like well, we could have released three singles doing, and yeah. you know. Yeah, no, but something uh that Micah kinda mentioned was kinda over the pandemic with bands, everything fell apart. But something that I felt like uh I really missed over the pandemic, not necessarily collaboration, but specifically live music specifically because yeah over the pandemic i watched it one of my close friends explodes on tiktok goes you know does really really well uh but then we get back out into almost like the real world the normal world again and then you have all of these artists who kind of blew up online and then they're like oh there 300 people out there no no i can't do that you know that's too many people to go out in front of you know uh, i think the biggest thing for me now is uh, after the pandemic is seeing live music come back mm-hmm. you know seeing like all of these shows coming back we got the make out music guys coming back here yeah. in la we got about the bridge shows coming back here in la mm-hmm. it's awesome you know and my point for that was you guys have you guys been playing quite a few shows for a band that doesn't only now has a single project or a single song out. You know, how important for you guys, if we're talking about, you know, maybe TikTok is in our jam, you know, how important is the live shows and the networking and the, you're saying people love you guys at the shows, they're dancing in the front row, you know, how important is that to you guys versus, you know, the other side of social media because, you know, like the trends, the things we just talked about because we don't like them, but we all do them. So how does uh, live music play into your kind of game plan as a band? Well, I think I think it's the most authentic way to gain fans and people that actually respect the music and yeah, that whole live aspect. Um, I think right now we're just kind of in a phase of just saying yes to everything that we get asked. And I think that's the best way to just kind of start everything from there. Yeah. Has that been stressful saying yes to everything? Especially if- no. <laughs> it's definitely overcommitted a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah. Honestly, it's like by far the best part of being a musician in music is live, playing mm. live. It's, I, that, I can say that. I mean, recording is stressful. You know, you want to get it right. You want to yeah. get it to sound good in every delivery. And putting music out, marketing is, is god awful. Yeah. But live music is like the perk. And it's so cool mm. to see people's faces and stuff. You guys want to totally like well, yeah. Like for me, it's the most important part Mm. of music. Um, Just like giving people like your energy, and then them giving it back, and it's a really good feeling. Where, what is the best or your guys' favorite venue that you've played at thus far? Whether that's like a crowd thing or like maybe how helpful somebody was or whatever. <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite? <laughs> With them, I think it would have. Though. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll say the last show we played. Yeah, yeah I agree. House the house show. show. We love that game. House shows are always, shows always, are always awesome. awesome. So awesome. Yeah, and we were worried it was gonna like rain on us, but <laughs> it all worked out. <laughs> what was there was something that you guys were filming recently. Out in the woods or something. I want to say the woods, <laughs> but it was. Yo, it was pretty. It was out in nature. Yo, there were trees out there. Okay, I know what you want from me. The woods, like. <laughs> yeah. We were doing tiny desk submission. There you right? go. Yeah, submission. Oh, yeah. Submission. I feel like that. That's been like I've seen a lot of like artist friends and band friends who are like, "Hey guys, check out my new art." Like, Literally. I think that's really. So how is how did that go? Are you guys done with that, or is that still in the works right now? Yeah, I think we're still editing of yeah. the last final bits. But yeah, it was just, um, we were just like, might as well just try. And if not to, it's a good overall video just to have out yeah. there. Um, yeah. yeah, we teamed up with uh, some people that I interned with. Um, I had a friend help film. And then we have another friend that did the audio. And so we were all just kind of working together on it and just seeing what happened. Because you guys were playing, like, you were playing outside. What were, What song were you guys doing? Was it like just a bunch of them or was it like... Oh, you did a couple. We did Insane 
<laughs> and which we is did. one that we haven't recorded yet, but yeah. hopefully we'll release it soon. Sweet. And the, the f- one final question was like also the the when you guys play live, how much of it are you guys doing covers to get like people like engaged or like how much of it are you guys doing the solo stuff or maybe like how what's that like ratio of like covers to like solo music? Like two covers in our set because it's just it's just fun. Yeah. You know, we've been doing La Tigre the the by mm-hmm. them. And then I think we did the money you will roll. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. The Nirvana cover is so fun. Uh, what? Uh, the money oh, will roll. Money? Yeah, the money will roll right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite Nirvana song. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, I was going to say that even like the, I think Nirvana is a great example of like, also, this ties in, and this is cool how we're circling back, but it ties into, like, also recording. Like, one of my... I love Nirvana's Bleach a lot because, like, that sounds like that they were recording that, like, in a garage with two mics. And they probably were, you know? like, But that's, like, the fun of it because, like, that shows, like, kind of the grunge aesthetic of, like, that music. And it's fun because I think even in, um, like, the single that you guys released and probably in the future stuff, too, like the the fun of punk music and the fun we have conversations we had a recent conversation with this guy named um dean fillinger about this too but like the fun of punk music a lot of the times is like that it's very much like it sounds like i don't sound how it looks basically yeah exactly sounds how it is essentially it's not like meant to be polished like it's not like and, like, from an audio engineering perspective, you don't want to, like, make sure every, like, snare is, like, oh, nice and perfect. And, like, the bit, like, it's supposed to sound dirty and, like, kind of distorted and, like, aggressive because the music resembles the feeling. You know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love a clean sound. Like, yeah. As an audio engineer, yeah. uh, we've, we've gotten lucky to record with someone who got a great sound for us the next time around be a little bit more polished Mm -hmm. and i i love all kinds of music i do love like i do love pop music Mm -hmm. i love it and i just as a songwriter you gotta love all different kinds of music freaking i love country music come on but um (laughs) the point is just to be yourselves and to sound authentic are you crying oh (laughs) <laughs> okay. just call me out. Yeah, I'm a little. I got a little like shy this way right now. I've been on the verge of sneezing for like <laughs> five minutes now. That's why I keep getting the dripping on my phone. I have been on the verge. You can probably like go back on the cameras. <laughs> The exact moment the I put out, I was like, oh, here it comes. Well, I and thought I'm it was... sitting here, and I have not sneezed for, like, five minutes. I'm so sorry. So I hope I have to be, like, distracted. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not know. ignoring you. I She's have... like, I like country music, and he just starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means? As, as someone born in Texas, you have no idea what that means to me. Finally. <laughs> That's really, really funny. Oh. The point is just not to sound like anyone else. Yeah. Right? Or just not, not like anyone else, but just... Just do what you want. Like, mm. sound like, write what you want, record what you want. That's it. Done. It, it can sound polished. It can sound like it was recorded with your car. Ox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How. Just. <laughs> no, don't. Like, listen. <laughs> there are some rappers that do that. Yeah, what you gonna, yeah, yeah don't, cool. don't hand on the car ox. I, look, I, I'm not familiar with the game, apparently. <laughs> no, but that is. Uh, we're almost out of time here, but I have one thing I did want to ask. Now I'm back. I'm back, by okay. the way. Hello. Nice to see you all again. I disappeared. I'm back now. He's crying. Uh, and it's... <laughs> yeah, I had a little... I had a little... I've had a long week, okay? I had to let a little emotion out, okay? But I'm back. And what I was wondering is, um, in your Instagram bio, this can be one of the last... Maybe we can get each of your opinions of what this maybe means to you. I want. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I believe that it was... 70s melodies, 90s attitude. Is that the is that the right? Did I get it? See, it didn't sneeze all my brains out. <laughs> um, maybe all. go down each of the four of you, and this can be our final thing. What what exactly does that mean to you? Like the 70s melodies, 90s attitude. You know, I've always loved growing up. I loved Fleetwood Mac, yeah. Led Zeppelin. I loved those guys, and then you know, obviously, you love Nirvana. Mm-hmm. You love, all, and we're trying to be enter into this new femme rock era that I believe is coming out, but it's so fun to pay tribute and hear the shit that you grew up with yeah. in your own stuff. Yeah. 
Um, to me, we'll just wrote that bio. So, <laughs> <laughs> so these are all fake. So okay. I'm just going with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like literally same answer. Like, <laughs> and re- repeat the clip over again. But yeah, like, like '90s <laughs> attitude. You know how that is. Mm-hmm. Crazy, and so I feel. Like Friends, <laughs> like Friends, right? That 70s show. Yeah, I know 90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah Friends. That's just... So it's fun, like, bringing that back, I guess. Because yeah. punk is coming back. Strong. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I am also going along with that. <laughs> you want to clip back <laughs> a third time real quick. <laughs> all feel the same way. No, I think it's just different layers. And just things that we all, yeah, grew up on. Things that we get inf- inspiration from. Yeah. We just kind of put it together into our own craft and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play the clip four times in a row. <laughs> That's really, really funny. It's like, she wrote it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, my fuck. <laughs> um, well, well, that's you awesome, from me. too. And I think, like, that's cool, too, especially, like, also closing out here is, like, how amazing is that that that's, like, 70s is, like, 50 years ago or something crazy like and 90s like even like 30 like that's insane like how far away this music is from now and like i think that like trends recycle and like for this to come like i i totally agree like the punk scene the punk scene is coming back and there's a lot of like of the um just some of that atmosphere that's just like people miss and i'm just really excited that you guys are like at the forefront leading that i think that's really awesome if you guys would like to share, like we have this camera right here and this one right in the middle. Um, any one of you wants to do it. Where can people find you? Like on Instagram or TikTok or any of those things. Um, where can they see a future show? What can they look for? Or what are we expecting to see from Cherry Club? In, the Cherry Club in the future. We're the Cherry Club. Get Out just released on all streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music. If you guys like Sounds from the 70s, 90s, and are into a new fem rock era, you can give us a listen. We have a bunch of shows coming up. You can find us on Instagram. We'll be posting about those. And we are dreaming of going on tour <gasps> this oh. summer if we can pull it off. What do you need? <laughs> you need a little van? Just we like a, a we should do a West Coast tour. Some money. Van. We want to do a West Coast tour. Oh, okay. Tour. Well, I my other trousers. I might have a van and yeah. maybe can borrow. I have <laughs> van and money in the <laughs> yeah, back yeah, right now. Get yeah, ready. Yeah, my amazing. bad. <laughs> we look under our seat. There's a van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like <laughs> Oprah. Get you get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Micah. Yes. Where can everyone find you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter or X now. What's up with that, you know? Uh, shoelace music spelled S H O O L A C E, and then music spelled music. And Finley, where can they find you and Rose Flower Records? Uh, my name is Finley. You can find me on Instagram at Finley Did It because who did it? Finley Did It. You know, uh, you can find uh, Rose Flower at Rose Flower Records on Instagram and talk at Rose Flower Records on X. Elon no. Musk, another reason to hate him. He's you know, I, he, he's going to wish his cars were bulletproof. Uh, and you can Whoa. email me at... <laughs> you can email me, Micah and Kate, at our names at www.roadshowrecords.com. And you can visit our website at www.roadshowrecords.com. Thank you guys again so much for coming by. I'm we're still gonna in shock <laughs> that you just hit the Elon Musk bar. That's no, listen. Crazy. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Bye.